Well, hey guys, happy Easter today, and uh, I've got a little different video for you. We're going to do a history lesson, and I'm going to unveil my new build, and I think you guys are going to like it, and I can't wait. It's something I've been looking for for years, and I couldn't find what I was looking for, so I'm going to create it myself. So uh, let's get into it. What's popular today on the internet? It's trucks. Now, I just got done doing a year's worth of building on that 1980 Dodge plow truck, right? That was a huge project. Frame, motor, suspension, cab, like the whole nine yards. It's outside right now. I took a breather on it. I just got to tune it and get it on the road and start driving in the summer. So I've been working on the Studebaker truck you've seen in the last couple of videos. My 1946 Studebaker M5 that I've had for 30 plus years. Now, next week, the Studebaker truck is on the way to Cleveland, Ohio, to the Piston Powered Show at the Cleveland Airport building there, Summit uh, Piston Powered Show. So I'm working on that. That's a truck. I, I seem to focus on trucks. I've got my Model A Hot Rod Shop truck, my Model A Tow truck, Studebaker truck, uh, my 77 Ford Camper Special, the 80 Dodge. I got my 95 Old Body Style Ford, um, my Ford van, my red 59 Willys. I'm, I'm a truck guy, I guess. I like I like cars, but I like trucks too. So what better way to get into the spirit of the channel for this year than to build another truck? Bam, right here. You see that? This is taken in 1980. This is a 1972 C10 Chevy Stepside. It's Hawaiian blue with like frost beige on the bottom. And my dad built this truck, or rebuilt it, restored it, hot routed it, street machined it back in the 80s. This is the first iteration when it was freshly painted. I got some color photos, but it unfortunately was sold in 1987 when my parents got divorced and I never saw it again. Here's another picture. Check out my uncle's 67 427 435 horse four speed Corvette in the background with six tail lights. All black, 67. That was a super cool car. But anyways, here is the, the truck, and I've looked and looked and looked on the internet for it. There is uh, some distinct features on it, which I'll show you here in a second, that would have made it real recognizable. I haven't been able to find it. Um, when it got sold in 1987, it went somewhere in northern Pennsylvania. Uh, somewhere, I forget, I rode with my dad. I was like 87, I was nine nine years old. When we went and dropped it off, I you know I couldn't tell you where it was, but we went, it was a couple hours away from home, just over the border in Pennsylvania, uh, below the southern tier of New York. So don't know what happened to it. Never saw it again. So what I'm going to do is recreate it. That's right. We're going to recreate that truck you just saw. I'll show you some more pictures. I've got some detailed pictures from 83, 84, 85 of when it was in its heyday. I've procured a C10 long box that we're to do a bunch of things. We're going to lower it, we're going to shorten the chassis, we're going to put a step side box on it, and we're going to clone that truck I just showed you. So here is the truck in color. It's Hawaiian blue, like I said, with frost beige on the bottom. It might get a little bit of, uh, we got some glare here, but we're going to have to work with what we got. This is in like 1980 when he got repainted. It originally was a Hawaiian blue truck. It was a Ended up with a 350 with a 4 on the floor, for a T10 4-speed. So I don't know if it was a V8 truck originally and it was on the tree or it was on the floor. I assume it was a standard shift truck originally, but it ended up with a 350 and a 4-speed on the floor. And it was lowered 4 inches. First of all, it got done. It looked like this. It had ET mags on it. It was stock height. My dad painted the grill black and he put a Chevy... I like Chevelle SS emblem in the grill, which was one of the uh, early markers of it. And uh, here's the rear of it. Here he made a, a pipe. He made a pipe bumper for the back of it. Here's me in 1979. And right here, if you look, where is it? Right back here, the red 59 Willys Jeep that I have and I amateurly stored. Here's me in like 1982 in it. And uh, it was pretty rough back then. And here's me in 1985 with my sister, and we are at the uh, Super Cruise, Hot Rod Magazine Super Cruise at Watkins Glen International Raceway. And I have this louver sign hanging on the wall in the pole barn, but 
uh, I have the louver machine, I have the sign, and I have the louvers, which is very important because this truck ended up with this truck ended up with a louvered tailgate. You see that? If you can see, it's kind of clear. It's next to my dad's friend uh, Nate George. It's a 33 or 4 Plymouth, I think, I think a 33 Plymouth coupe. And this is all in 1985. This is like 1980, 81, 82 here. It was stock height. And then by 1985, it was lowered 4 inches. It had 41 to 48 Chevy taillights under it, louvered tailgate, louvered hood. And uh, there's some up-close personal pictures here. Here is 1980, I believe 1984. My dad was louvering the tailgate. Here it is here. They're actually rectangular louvers, which I had to die for. And there's some pinstriping around it. You can see the ET mags. Right here it says truck after 4-inch lowering, louvered hood, louvered tailgate. It was Hawaiian blue, like I said, for, I believe frost beige on the bottom. This is in 1983, next to a 57 Chevy Bel Air two-door hardtop that he was restoring with a 396 big block. Funny story, 1983, this is a 1973 Chevy Laguna coupe. And my dad parted this out. I believe the rear end from this car is in the yellow 37 Buick, which I have. And actually, the yellow Buick is in the barn unrestored at this time in this picture. And my Studebaker truck is in this barn when this picture is taken, and the Red Willys Jeep is sitting there in the barn when that picture is taken. This car is a tale of woe. He bought it from a neighbor up the road, parted it out at 10 years old. I don't know why. It must. Be, it already had rust on it. I know that. I remember when he did this in 1983. And we took the body, believe it or not, off the chassis and put it in the creek bank to help hold the creek together. So this 73 Laguna Chevelle body ended up in the creek. The side louvers and everything, we saved the front clip which I sold on Craigslist about 10 years ago. And anyways, history lesson. So here's the truck. You can see it was painted the Chevrolet taillight, the Chevrolet tailgate, and then it ended up with a louvered tailgate. The original taillights are removed, which I have the original taillights. I have those still. And it had 41 to 40 Chevy louvered taillights put on there. But it was a very sharp looking truck, lowered four inches, um, ET mags, Air dam, painted black grill, louvered hood, pinstriping, blue interior, Hawaiian blue interior, and a really, really neat street truck from the mid-1980s. You know, pretty much before these trucks were popular. Here's more pictures of the 57 Chevy. Um, this got sold when my dad bought the yellow Buick. Here's some more interesting pictures. I actually remember this day. Here's my sister. Here's my dad taking pictures. Here's my uncle taking pictures, and he's actually taking a picture this way. My dad's taking a picture that way. They ended up in the same shot. But this guy brought his Chevy truck, I think it's a 69, I think. Um, he drove it up from Alabama all the way to New York State to have the hood louvered. And as you can see, he chopped the top, I don't know, probably four inches on that truck. He grafted in... Square body Chevy taillights grafted in there. It wasn't lowered, stock height. You can see the height of the bumper here, stock height 69 truck, but louvered hood, chop top, and working on another street machine. But the hood, you can see the hood here in the background hanging on the stands for the louver machine. So this was, this must have been 1984 probably because the tailgate wasn't louvered on my dad's truck yet, but the hood was louvered in these shots. You can see there's three rows of louvers in the hood. So um, the pictures, the color's a little off, but you can see see the colors on it here. So it's going to be a neat truck. We're going to make it identical to this. It's going to be identi completely identical. I got pictures of the pinstripes. I actually have these license plates. I'll show you them in a second. But you can still get slot mags, US mags that are pretty much identical to these. Um, I already got the lowering kit for the truck. Over here, a whole pile of Chevy parts right there, ready to rock and roll. I got a lowering kit. Um, you can get a brand new box if you can't find a used one. We can shorten the frame. We can, we can clone this truck. And that's what I plan on doing. Here is in the barn. Here's the yellow Buick in 1983 or 4 before it was restored. So let's go back. 
Do I got any other pictures? Let's see. Da -da -da. Right here was the specs. My dad wrote down on the engine, 1970, 354 bolt mains, aluminum holly intake, 650 CFM, four barrel uh, holly carburetor, headers, cam dynamics, camshaft, and kit. But as you can see, the stance is not slammed on the ground like modern day you know, trucks now where they put big wheels on them and airbag them. It's not slammed. It's lowered four inches, but it's got pretty big tires on it. They probably they, These were early radials or... I believe they're early radials. They look like... Now well, they might have been bias plies, actually. To tell you the truth, I, I'm not sure. They could be bias plies, but they're pretty tall. Say the equivalent like a 235, 75, 15. So the truck was lowered, but it had still tall tires on it. So it's like a street machine truck. It wasn't slammed like they've done today on them. And it actually looks good. So we're going to do it so do it identical. We're going to lower it the same amount. But we're gonna put I'm gonna put big tires on it, tall sidewall tires on slot mags, just like it's gonna look identical. Just as in the side, this is a cool car my uncle had. It was a 31 Chevy Coupe. It was uh, channeled, unchopped, had a 327 in it with a power glide, and they called it the Jalopy. It was a pretty it wasn't really a rat rod, but it was really rough. It had some you know, like plywood floors and you know original drum brakes and it, it was sketchy but it was a cool old car just a beat around hot rod and ended up getting redone and sold and painted purple back in the 90s and then i don't know where it went after that but i remember riding in it it was pretty loud it had bucket seats and the 327 like i said with a power glide and just a basic hot rod eight inch wide chevy rally wheels volkswagen turn signals up on the fenders and I believe it had like 62 Chevy taillights on the rear fenders. Like I said, I've, procu I've procured a C10. It's actually like a mile up the road. I let my buddy know I was looking for one. And, and uh, my neighbor up the way, he's doing a, I think, a 72 uh, K20, K10. And he had bought this other truck for, uh, I think, for parts and or like to look at. And it's just a, just a stripper model, long box. Uh, six cylinder, three on the tree. Originally it was like medium red uh, color. Now it's painted like brown and rust and primer. And got to do some rust work on this project. So you got to put a roof skin in it, floors, rockers, uh, cab corners, uh, cab mounts. I'm going to sell the box, the long box, and immediately take that off and sell it. But it's got a lot of the parts that I need. I don't even mind it's got the six cylinder. I like straight six trucks. I, I haven't heard it run. I've seen the truck. It's in a barn, kind of like wadded in. So we can't, when we go to rescue it and pull it out of there, I've actually already registered a truck, so I have license plates for it. We're going to go up and uh, get it running and drive it back here in a, in a couple of weeks. But it it was on the road two year, two or three years ago. So it ran and drove. Another guy had it on the road. I'm hoping that it's something I can work on and drive at the same time. Um, we're going to start, do all the heavy stuff first, all the rust repair first, all that stuff, get it, get it safe and, uh, shorten the frame right away. I'm going to lower it right away. I showed you that I got the, all the lowering parts. I got four springs, uh, track bar, the uprights, uh, disc brake conversion because it's a, it's a drum brake truck. I got disc brake conversion for the front of it. So I've got $1,300 worth of suspension parts to put it in the truck immediately. And I like these trucks because they look good. And you can buy any part you want for them. Any piece of sheet metal, yep, you got it. Any mechanical part, you got it. Interior parts, you got them. We can, I can, not like that Dodge where I had to like find five trucks to restore it. Nope. You can buy any part you want for a 67 to 72 Chevy. So, and they're, re, they're pretty reasonable. So I can, sure, I can put this truck on the road without going bankrupt like I did with the Dodge. I got a lot of money in the Dodge. We're going to do a wrap-up video on that um, pretty soon and go over it for you. You won't believe the amount of money. I don't believe the amount of money I spent on that stupid truck. It's going to be cool, but man, did, did it cost way more than I thought it was going to cost. So here are the license plates that were on the truck in the 80s. And these plates, New York State used up to 1986. And then they went to white plates with Liberty on them. And uh, actually, I gave my sister the white Liberty plates. But I have the original orange commercial truck plates that were on it and all those pictures I showed you here. And it says... Quick, quick truck, and my dad had that on their quick truck. So I can, uh, I can recreate the truck right down to the original license plates. Here on on this picture, let me get in there so you can see it. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna focus on it, but there's the quick, 
the quick truck plates right on there. So just just look at that truck sitting there. I mean, it, it's got such a good look. The thing is super cool. Like I said, like all these guys now that do these trucks, they put big inch wheels on them. They put them right on the ground. They like hack them all up, airbag them and everything, which, which is cool. Like they look good like that, but that's not what we're going for. We're going for the mid 80s street machine look with this build. I'm going to make it identical to that truck and it's going to stick out because these trucks are popular now, but nobody's building an 80s version. They're all, like I said, they're all freaking squatting them right on the ground. We're going to do it how it was back in the day. I don't really have any good pictures of the truck I bought, but when we unveil it in a couple of weeks, you can see that. But it's uh, it's a conglomeration of parts. It's got a 68 box side on one side without, or 67 box side with no marker light. I don't, I don't know what happened to it. It's got a whole bunch of mixed match parts on it. But the bones are good. The chassis is good. Like I said, it was on the road. Um, after we put, you can buy, I was looking on the internet, you can buy rockers, cab corners, floorboards, and cab supports, like a whole package for like 350 bucks. I mean, that's real reasonable. Put all the sheet metal in it. The doors are solid. The fenders are solid. The hood is solid. The rest, I don't, I'm going to sell the long box, like I said. So except for the rust in the roof where they, a lot of them rust, it's, it's a really good building truck that was reasonable. These, these trucks are a lot of money. You want to buy a run and driving truck that's really solid, they're like 10 grand and above, like especially for a short box. They're, your sky's the limit. Um, they're restored, they're all the freaking money. So I, I bought this truck right. It's going to need some work, but it's going to be a cool project. So that's it. That's what's happening. In probably, give me like three weeks, we'll, once the weather breaks, we'll go to the barn up the road, we'll get the truck out, we'll fire it up, hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, and I haven't heard it run yet, but we'll drive it here. I th like I said, I'll, it's got a 256 in it with a 3 on the tree. I have a Camaro T5 I could put in it. By, you know, switch the tail shaft with an S10 tail shaft, I could put a 5-speed in it. It's probably got 373 rear gears, I'm going to guess. Something like that, because it's a 6-cylinder truck. Um, so the overdrive would help it for drivability. I, uh, I could take this, if the 6 is junk, I could put a small block in it. could put an LS in it. Um, like my dad's truck had a 350, I would probably just stick with a sm stock small block. And there's no reason to really put an LS in it, even though that's what everybody wants. But I'm building this truck for me to keep. I don't, it doesn't need an LS. Like a 350 is fine. For now, it's running and driving so I can work on it and progress along the way. So that's going to help be helpful for me. I don't need a whole nother year long project of a dead vehicle that's completely apart that I can't work on or that I can't, that takes up the garage the whole time. So, I'm super excited. I've been looking for a long time for a truck, and I thought they were out of reach. This one just happened to fall in my lap just by happenstance, and it's going to work out for what I want to do, and I can't wait to start building it and recreating my dad's 72 Chevy Stepside street machine from the 80s. It's going to be awesome. And then I, I got like a collector series in my dad's vehicles, I just realized. I've got the Yell Buick, which was in unrestored in that picture in 83. I've got the Red Willys Jeep, which will be cut firewood on, that I amateurly restored. I've got my Studebaker truck that was in the barn in that shot. The only pick, the only vehicle I don't have is the 57 Chevy Bel Air hardtop, which I don't need a 57 Chevy Bel Air hardtop. I'm going to build my 58 Plymouth, but I've got like three out of the four sets of the cars that he built. It's like a collector series. I don't know, but or I can't wait to build that step side. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to be painted. The wine blue is going to be all blue because the truck needs to be painted. I'm going to do the cream on the bottom or the frost beige on the bottom. But the chassis, I'm not going to blow it all apart and sandblast it like I did with the Dodge. It's not going to be a complete frame off. It's going to be like a driver quality. Kind of like if I found my dad's truck actually today and it was like, you know, put away in a barn and it was a little rough around the edges 45 years ago or 40 years ago or wherever, you know, 38 years ago. It's going to be like that. Like, I dragged it up and I found it years later. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to be a driver, but it's going to look identical to that truck. Identical. And I'll be able to remember what it was like riding around in it. So, I hope you guys will stick around for that. Happy Easter. And we'll see you from the Piston Powered Show in Cleveland. That's where Ted and I are heading. That's what you'll see in the next video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Bam! Getting in the C10 Chevys, I guess, now. Might as well. Here at the Quick Speed Shop.